Especially a nigga rapping. It's something about that rapping nigga's brain. He think he got life at 35. He think he still got one good song that's go get him on. You can't market no 30-something-year-old rapping nigga, homie. <laughs> <laughs> DIY. DIYers, a controversial figure, Charleston White, made some really interesting comments when it comes to age and it comes to rapping as men. A few years ago, I told this dude, because he was a rap, well, he was trying to be a rapper and uh, he was passing out CDs. And I'm like, man, you outdated. Like, that shit is like, niggas don't got CDs no more. And yeah, he thought yeah, I was yeah. hating on him, but. Yeah, you was, man. You was hating on him, Sean. <laughs> you don't kill no nigga dream. He's standing out there. That might have been all he had in life, that last hope. I was just trying, nah, man. I was just trying to put him on game. Like, man, no. Just letting you know, if you've never seen content by Charleston White, he will very quickly go in and out of what he considers a character. And so you may feel a little bit of trolling energy. It's probably because it's accurate. Everybody's listening to your CD, bro. We can't even, they don't even have them in car players, no, in cars no more. Like, I'm just trying to put him on game. Yeah, yeah, everybody don't need to be put on game. Yeah, some leave, some yeah, don't. You ain't always got to throw an alarm clock in the graveyard. Let that nigga stay there. Yeah, keep him hope alive. Sell him some hope. Yeah, some that's nigga right. don't need game. Some nigga need some bullshit hope. Damn, that's a great introduction of who Charleston White is. <laughs> yeah, like when you in last place running track and your mama jump up and say, you can do it, baby, keep going. I used to walk off the field. <laughs> yeah, I used to run track, I'd be in last place, my mama jump up, I'm, baby, you can do it. That's what make me quit. Some nigga, you don't need to just lie to like that. No, just lie to him. With a yeah, straight some face. Some need to be lied to, uh, especially them niggas trying to rap. Talking to me? What do you mean, Charleston? Yeah, lead them niggas on with a lie as long as you can to reality hit them niggas. And it seemed like reality take a long time for them niggas to snap. Especially a nigga rapping. It's something about that rapping nigga's brain. He think he got life at 35, 30. He think he still got nigga one good song that's go get him on. You can't market no 30 something year old rapping nigga, homie. <laughs> It's something about Charleston White's delivery that makes me want to know more about why he has come to this conclusion. First of all, it don't seem like it comes from a malicious place. And second of all, it don't come from a place where it's like he's mincing his words. You're like, that's exactly how I feel. I'm intrigued. Why do you say that after 35, we just need to give it up? Or who needs to give it up? You got to be ready to crash out. A few of your partners got to be young enough to go to jail. Oh, hmm. uh, no, nah, you can pass 30. Stop it. <laughs> So you think that's the mark for rapping, 30 years old? Uh, really once your brain start developing. Mm. So around 25, 26, 27, if you don't look like you got it, uh, stop, homie. When I listen to this now, I think what's important to know is that it seems like he's talking to a certain demographic of rappers that still have aspirations for the record business have aspirations to be like on BET, have aspirations to be a superstar, to win the Grammys, right? To have all the crazy streaming numbers, the social media viral numbers. I think he's talking about those. There are rappers that are around my age that are still holding on to the idea that they can be an 18 year old phenom. Nigga, you're 35. It's time to rearrange those goals. Nobody said to quit, but it's time to rearrange those goals because now the optics have changed. That's not trying to be a hater to anybody. Your demographic has changed. Now, if you're 35 and you're trying to appeal to 18 and 19 year olds, there's some that may even call that predatory. What are we doing? It's time to reevaluate. Uh, you can't keep doing the same thing, expecting different results. In your 20s, you was known in the streets for rapping. Uh, you coming up on your 30s. By now, you probably got a kid, a woman that half ass believe in you. Damn. Now live together. And she's supposed to rest her future on you becoming a rapper when they don't sign rappers no more. Can you be mad at the information? This is not an attack. Why the hell would I want to cover a video about somebody that I feel like is maliciously attacking older rappers when I myself am considered an older rapper? Even though in the grand scheme of things, I got... 40 and 50 year olds that still call me a baby. I've always said for the longest, there ain't nothing wrong with whatever your age is and having aspirations and dreams. With this added caveat, as long as you're taking care of your responsibilities and you're doing what you can to make ends meet. To me, that's just, in my opinion, the definition of what being a stand-up man is. You take care of your responsibilities. If you have dreams, you fund those dreams. 
You don't ask people around you to fund those for you, especially the deeper you get in your 30s and eventually your 40s. Rapping niggas ain't getting signed and getting money no more. Rapping niggas got to show up already with money. Yeah, they got to already have the following and these niggas ain't got it. Yeah, no, nah, nigga, ain't nobody riding around listening to these niggas shit. Mm. Their friends ain't doing it, their girls ain't doing it, nobody. There are niggas in their 30s right now who are irresponsible whether they are rapping, whether they are on the corner begging somebody for money, not nobody homeless, somebody with the full capability to get out there and work, and they sitting out here pandering the homies, asking the homies to pay for their food. We're not talking about the successful 30-year-old rappers. We gotta stop putting them in that bunch because it's an insult to them. Those are businessmen. This point needs to be made because there are individuals right now that are pursuing rap who don't, first of all, care about rap, won't dedicate the time to get better at rap. All they're doing are putting out songs and trying to hit the jackpot. They're releasing what I think are casingles, singles meant to hit the casino hit the lottery. They're not dedicated to their craft like your favorite 30 year old rapper. We're not talking about that. We're talking about people who are literally mooching off their girlfriends, mooching off of their mama, mooching off of whoever will put that money into their pockets. Even they find an exec with some money, they'll mooch off of them and never hold themselves accountable for why they haven't grown in their career. They're too busy spending this money on budget and shit that has nothing to do with growing their career. When you tell niggas this, they always bring up 2 chains, Cause 2 chains was 34 when he popped. Kitty Boy met Eminem's road manager. True. A lot of people make these examples of, well, what about Titty Boy, right? What about 2 Chainz? 2 Chainz is an older rapper that blew off when he, when he blew off. Hey, yo, he's an older rapper that blew up at a late age. One thing that we do not take into consideration because it sounds like it's magic and hocus pocus, luck plays a role in everyone's success. Your success, my success, there are things, chance encounters, a sequence of events that had to happen for you to be successful in this age today. It's not all just your hard work. With that said, nobody really talks about what Charleston White's talking about right now in that he happened to come across Eminem's tour manager and this gave him a unique opportunity to find traction at a later age. The likelihood that everybody's gonna find that? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Come on. Titty Boy met Eminem's road manager, little short white dude who been with Eminem since he started. That's where you heard 2 Chainz say, true, he talking about the little white dude. He really couldn't rap. She got a big booty, so I call her big booty. That's an elementary dumb rap. <laughs> Somebody gonna have to tell you gotta get on 2 Chainz like that, Charleston. Uncle Charleston, why you gotta get on 2 Chainz like that? He just went and put some bad ass beats with that shit. Name another one. 2 Chainz had some motion too in Atlanta way before that too. To give us another one. So so that's <laughs> one rapper. Na name another one. It's not too many rappers not, that homie. blew up late like that. It's a young man's sport. It's an old man's business. Mm. If you're in your 30s and you've been rapping five long, you've been rapping, well, what have you learned when you can transition nigga into a role of maybe a CEO, somebody who can develop art, a nigga who can ghostwrite? I wish I could rap. I probably would be trying to rap at 46. <laughs> Why to say all that just to be like, yeah, 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 yeah. I wish I could rap. Think about the, the playlists that you see right now that are pushed. If it is not an artist that already made their footing when they were in their 20s, it is someone who is indeed in their 20s. They have developed this into a young man's sport. In the same way, very ironically, that the NBA has developed their league into a three-point shooter's league. You can't even be a big man and not have handles anymore. If so, you're not getting a whole lot of playing time. The same thing is happening to the traditional music industry. And you can allude to whatever reasons that may be, they have made a, the focus younger artists. Why? Because it gives them a tool to a generation, a Gen Zer, that they could not otherwise access if the tool with someone older. Also, when you're giving out these shitty contracts, you got people who are more willing to say yes. They just want to ball out. They want to show, they want to prove people wrong. Their priorities are different. What's going on with you DIYers? Thank you so much for choosing to watch this video. One thing I want to give you a heads up of is that I just released my project called Storm Symphony with my good friend Aaron Barber. <laughs> Why should you care? Because I know you didn't come here for my music. You probably came for the content. If you're a rapper or a music producer, there are added bonuses for you actually purchasing the album. If you're a producer, every sample that you hear that was composed originally by Aaron Barber, you will get a royalty-free 
pack of 10 melodic loops that you can use royalty free for your beats to sell, your own music and all that good stuff. Also, FL Studio has partnered with me to give out five copies of FL Studio for those of you that want to start off your production career. But Curtis, I don't know how to use FL Studio. How the hell would that benefit from that? Well, along with one of the other tiers, you're also going to get my FL Studio beginners course. So this is the way that I am incentivizing those of you that actually still buy music because you know what? Fine art still sells. And I made some fine ass art on this project that I think you're going to really, really enjoy. Make sure that you go to CurtisKing.com for more information. Now back to the video. Damn, you and 2 Chainz, y'all the same age. That's crazy. Damn. I mean, not my bad, my bad, my bad. Because Charleston White, like I said, he got like an older energy to him. He got that older, older uncle, older cousin energy to him. Him and 2 Chainz is the same age. But if you put them next to each other, based upon how they're dressed, you even even him dressed like this, he don't. I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna just say the age don't look like it's the same age as the same age as the same age. He's 46 as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so so that conversation was dead in the water. Let's move on. But this point now, why you want to be a rapper, nigga? It don't pay. Mm. Rapping look, don't yeah. pay. Most nigga gotta pay to rap. Mm. It, mm. Let's elaborate. What does a rapper have to pay for? A rapper has to pay for studio time if they don't have their own studio. They have to pay for their features if they don't have the space or relationship with these artists. They have to pay to play at shows. Everybody, they have to, have to pay for the video, the music video director. Now, we could switch that and say they get to pay, which should gift you in a place of gratefulness, but man, of gratitude, but man, oh man, it is expensive to be a rapper. Now, add on top of that, the general inflation that is occurring right now, it is very, it's a very expensive career choice, especially if you're not getting any scratch especially too i'm going to add another caveat to that if you're relying upon streaming and you still don't have your traction yet oh my gosh not the conversation about the threshold yes the conversation about the threshold damn i already invest all of this money to go into the red for this career that I don't quite know how it'll pan out. And I know that there's funds out there, but at least as a small business, you can get a small business loan, even if you don't necessarily have a loan credit history. You can get a small business loan if you go through the proper mediums and the channels and you understand what things you can claim on your taxes and you know all the business and how to cross your T's and dot your I's. As a rapper, explain to me what fund there that exists. Now there are grants that I'm learning about now in my 38th year after you get your LLC and your done number, but man, if a nigga come in town, they got to pay to come perform in front of another nigga. More nigga, it don't pay. So it, it's just like, how much just like selling drugs now? Nigga, everybody know at this point, selling drugs is a dead end street. Mm. Nigga, you ain't fit to get what you can get and get out and walk away rich. That was the biggest lie told to us. At this point in rap, nigga, we know for a fact, nigga, you ain't going nowhere. You ain't making no money. So why not utilize that energy to just create content. Nigga, look like the content creators make way more than rappers. Look I like mean, I mean, I, I, do, I, do, I do pretty well for myself. I'm gonna hit you with that one. I'm gonna, Somebody's you know, gonna I'm, have to tell the truth shit, that I'm gonna tell I do all right, you feel me? I, yeah, I, shit, I, shit, I shit. Thank you, Uncle Charleston. That's all I wanted to say, go ahead. Look like the gamers make way more than the rap nigga, just showing the wads of money. Who wants to be a rapper? Who? Other than a young, dumb, stupid kid that's angry and these lyrics is a form of self-expression. Other than that, nigga, you not getting mama out the hood with that shit. Damn. Go make a beat. You might make a beat and get out the hood faster. <laughs> I appreciate a Charleston White saying something like that. It stops a certain mindset where I believe it was it was strategically put upon folks that look like me that the only option is to be an athlete, an entertainer or a rapper, because what it does is it helps to fund and fuel an industry that will make money off of you, whether or not they choose to break bread with you. And it's even more exaggerated when you think about the Spotify threshold situation. Can you imagine the amount of struggle raps, the amount of up and coming raps that are going to be invested into this space in the hopes that it can get a thousand streams annually? That's a lot of work for some people. Some people it comes a little bit easier. They got more skills to go along with that. They can make content. They can do these things. 
Not everybody has the same teaching, not making excuses, but not everybody has the same teaching. And there's a lot of people investing a lot of money into this. And you think about the things that they are great at. I'm not saying don't rap no more. I'd never tell nobody who got dreams and not rap no more because I love you and I want to see you be happy. Ultimately, if it makes you happy to create, create. I'm always say this, though, as a friend. I would want you to challenge me when I'm not taking care of my responsibility and I'm at a place now where I've involved other people. Maybe it's somebody that I'm in a relationship with. Maybe it's a wife. Maybe it's, you know what I'm saying? Maybe it's a son. Maybe it's a daughter. When you bring other people in, this is not their dream, but you're now asking them to be patient and sacrifice for you. I tell you right now, over the last few years, there have been some amazing moments in content creation for me, some amazing musical moments for me as well. There have also been some really low moments where I had to really think about what the future of this would look like for me. I had to envision myself at 45 asking myself, could I imagine doing the kind of videos I was doing at that point in time? And I said flat out, no. <laughs> the one thing I could say amongst all this was that I was not too prideful if I needed to go get a job. I was grateful that I could go get a job to support what I'm doing. I also knew that just because I pivoted from one creative field does not mean I'm going to stop being creative. I'm a creative at heart. Rapping is just one of the mediums, one of the vehicles that I use to be creative. You can put me inside of a school and I, I could be a gym teacher. I'll be your favorite gym teacher because I am always going to be Curtis King, the creative, but I am not too prideful to do that, to take care of my responsibilities or to help fuel and fund the very thing that I said that I want to achieve. Some people are too prideful to do that. And they walk around here and blame everybody else for the reason why this shit not taken off i had to say because the shit is not easy especially even for those who really care about it who really invest who really are making the best business decisions they know how it ain't easy for all of us but we do it because we love it and we know how to support it in different ways or we're willing to learn how to support it it's some people don't even want to learn but yet they go around here and they blame everybody for hating on them because of their age it ain't your age it's the age you acting at your age those are my thoughts though ladies and gentlemen diyers you let me know what y'all think. DIY. DIYers, if you enjoyed this content, make sure that you hit the like button and maybe even consider subscribing. Come on, man. Stop, stop being greedy. Peace.